Hi, so I just want to do one example where we try to actually apply this theorem to a particular, to a particular um, implicitly defined set. So we're just going to do the sphere first because that one's very easy to see, and then we can look at some of the other ones. The sphere here, the sphere is P1 squared plus P2 squared plus P3 squared equals 1, so I subtract the 1 to make it equal to 0. And once we've done this, we need to figure out our function f. So we find f. And when we do that, we get that f of p1, p2, p3 is actually equal to p1 squared plus p2 squared plus p3 squared minus 1. So that's our function f. And now we have to find df. So when we find df, we take df is df dp1, df dp2, df dp3, because this f only has one output variable. It's, it's just zero. It's just one single real variable, so f has only one answer here. So it has only one row. So now we take with respect to P1 of this, and that is two P1s. We take with respect to P2 here, and we get two P2s. And we take with respect to P3 here, and we get two P3s. And now we have to check at every point P and M, at every P and M, what do we know about every P and M? Well, we know that P1 squared plus P2 squared plus P3 squared equals one. P1 squared plus P2 squared plus P3 squared equals 1. So not all 3 are 0. If all 3 were 0, we get 0 squared plus 0 squared plus 0 squared equals 1. So it's not true that all 3 are 0. That means one of them is not 0. So at least one is not 0. So that means one of these entries, one of these entries of df is not zero. It's not zero. So df has full rec. And since df has full rank, it has a non-zero number in here, so it's full rank. So df has full rank, so the sphere has a chart at each point. Point P in Each, it has a chart at each point, at each p. I'm just not going to take a whole line to say that. So at every p we have this chart, and in fact, when we do these charts, let's just draw the sphere for a second so we can see about this. So up here on this top part of the sphere, on this part of the sphere, we know that we have p3 greater than 0. So for this, for this part of the sphere, we have a chart when P3 is greater than zero, the chart has P3 as a leader, and P1 and P2 are variables, and when, when, P2 is greater than 0, which is this side of the sphere. The chart has P2 equal to leader, and P1 and P3 are free, and so on. And in this way, we end up getting six charts out of the, for the sphere because we have the case P3 positive, P2 positive, P2 negative, P3 negative, P1 positive, and P2 negative, which is actually the picture that's in the book here 
where they have all these um, six charts on the sphere. So I have a photo of that on the page in our class. So that's uh, an example of solving this out. And then we say, yes, this M is a smooth surface, but not only do we know it's a smooth surface, but we know exactly how to find the charts. We know which, which um, variables to solve for. And so you can look at the lesson about implicit function theorem to see how to actually explicitly solve for them. So let me just photo this so you have a copy of this one too. And now let's do another application, a different function that we were looking at before. And what I want to do is the cone. So let's consider the cone. So for the cone, cone is p1 squared plus p2 squared equal p3 squared. So we subtract to get equal zero. Let me write it this way. This is the cone. And we have to say, is this a smooth surface? So first we have to find our, our f. So we find our f and it's has to be solving for zero. So I'm going to subtract the p3 squared when I do the f minus p3 squared. And then when I take the derivatives, I get a negative 2p3 over here. And then the real problem is that at every point p and m, we have p1 squared plus p2 squared equal p3 squared. OK? But now we could have a point where all 3 is 0. This includes p1, p2, p3 equal to 0, 0, 0. All right, so now all the stuff we concluded for the, for the sphere is not going to work. Well, let me draw the cone so you can see what's happening here. Our cone looks like this. And when p is not 0, so at every p, at every p and m taking away the point 0, if I avoid 0, if I look at points over here or down here, then I have no trouble. If p is, if p is not all 3, 0, then df has full rank. Then df has full rank has a non-zero entry, entry, and this full rank, and we can find a leader. The leader. In fact, on this cone, that's, the leader will be P3. In fact, the leader is P3 because P3 is not equal to 0. At any of these points, P3 is not 0. So that's fine. You solve for P3 and you get a nice chart. But at P equal to 0, 0, 0, DF equals 2 times 0, 2 times 0, minus 2 times 0 is 0, 0, 0 which has rank 0. Equal to 0. It's a 0 matrix that has rank equal to 0. There's no non-zero rows. There's no leaders. It has no leaders. No leaders. So here we were. We said, oh, M is the cone. And we checked all these points up here. And all these points are fine. But at this P000, zero, 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 this point, this one bad point is enough to ruin the whole surface. So it is not a surface. The cone is not a surface. All right? So what I'm going to have you do next is you're going to do a couple of um, uh, cases where you're going to look at an M and you're going to determine whether or not it is a surface using this method. All right? Thank you.